Golden State Media Concepts bring you Book Review Podcast, a haven for bookworms of all ages and the widest genres from mystery to memoirs, romance to comedy, fantasy to sci-fi. If you love to read, this is the podcast for you. It's the Golden State Media Concepts Book Review Podcast. Hello and welcome to the GSMC Book Review Podcast, brought to you by the GSMC Podcast Network. I am your host, Sarah. It is the second time I am with you this week, and I am happy to be here once again. And we are we're still covering a thriller. We're still we're still in thrillers this week. So second um, interview, second thriller of the week. Before we get to that, though, of course, how are you doing? How has your week been? How does your weekend look? It is Friday. That is um, always a nice feeling if you have a weekend coming up or, you know, whatever day your Friday happens to be on. Not sure how much of a weekend I'm going to have this week, but we'll see how it goes. Hopefully there will be the usual walk. And it was once again sunny and beautiful on our walk today, and we met a lovely couple from Canada. Actually, we met a lovely couple today from Canada and a lovely couple yesterday from Canada. Um... I met a couple from somewhere else yesterday, too, but now I can't remember where they were from. No, it wasn't. No? It doesn't matter. But then um, we met another lovely woman who offered to take our picture, which was nice of her, and she was French, so I spoke very bad French with her. I, I didn't speak is too kind of a word, but I did at least try to communicate in what limited French I have, and I was I was trying to at least have some portion of a conversation if I know any of it in a language that other people speak. Just just try. Um, Anyway, so yeah, I love, I know I've said it before, but I I do love how multicultural it is here and how many people we meet from different places and how many languages I hear spoken. And I always love to listen to people and try to figure out, do I know what language they're speaking? Can I kind of maybe figure out where they might be from? It's it's fun. It's, uh, It's very... I think it's good for my brain, probably. My brain needs all the help it can get these days. But um I hope you've had a good week. And whatever you're doing this weekend, I hope you are looking forward to something in your weekend. As I said, we have another thriller today. And I am speaking with author Cindy Fazzi about her book. It's called Multu. Uh, sorry, Multo. I keep doing the long O's on the ends of words, and it's just the same. The main character of this book's name is Domingo, and in my head I read it Domingo every time. I mean, I guess I'm starting to get a little Portuguese something or other in my brain, but it doesn't help when I make all the ends of words O sounds when they are O sounds. So, multo, uh, which means ghost in Tagalog, and I'm going to read you the description of this thriller. His latest job is to catch the one that got away three times. <laughs> Filipino-American bounty hunter Domingo has made a career of catching criminal and undocumented immigrants. He's the best in the business, and it isn't lost on him that he's so good because of his similarities to his targets. Despite Domingo's claims that he is unsympathetic to their plight, yet spends his spare moments on stakeouts and in-between jobs writing a book of advice for aspiring immigrants— Brash, funny, and candid, he compiles the names of all the people he's apprehended, documenting the hazards of his profession and imparting advice to foreigners who dare to dream of life in America. Domingo's latest job is finding biracial Filipino woman Monica Reed for the third time. Monica is the only fugitive who has ever escaped him, and the only one he's ever released against orders. As he embarks on a third and final hunt for her, Domingo uncovers a dangerous truth that Monica was determined to publicize, even though it put her life in danger. And as he chases her around the country, despite his agreement to arrest people like Monica, Domingo finds himself taking her side. Flushing out immigrants whose biggest crime was clinging to the American dream pales in comparison to getting justice for a woman who he discovers was living in the shadows but was only ever searching for the truth. 
full of action and humor. Multo is a is also a meditation on what it means to be unwelcome and unwanted in a country you love and the sacrifices such love requires. So that, again, is the description of Multo, which is uh, written by Cindy Fazzi. And uh, one, this is a thriller, so um, I am learning to appreciate thrillers more and more and more. I like the fast-paced nature of the book. I love that it is written with a lot of heart and a lot of humor. Domingo as a character is easy to like, and he is... He is funny in his own way, but he's he's got a very strict set of rules, a very strict set of morals that he goes by, and um, he is he's a naturalized citizen. So he, in a lot of ways, understands what the people that he is chasing are going through. He understands their mindset maybe a little bit more than another bond enforcement agent might. So he's got different layers and levels to his personality, but then he encounters Monica, and we get different timelines so we get the we get the story from the previous two times that he had to find her and what the reasons were and why she got away two times before this and why he's now looking for her a third time but then there's the other layers so you've got the 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 conspiracy the mystery that monica has uncovered and now domingo is trying to figure out so that he can try to find monica you've got that all those layers and they have to do a lot with immigration there's a lot of things in a lot of layers in this book dealing with immigration from domingo's own status as a naturalized citizen to the sort of handbook that he's writing for people who maybe are immigrants or undocumented um and just it's told with such a lot of like i said a lot of heart and humor and if you it's it's a topic that's in the news a lot right now immigration right and so if it's something that you're interested in but you're not quite sure how to even start then maybe a fiction book might be a good entry in entree into this topic because you can read about someone. It's not a real person, but it's a representation of lots and lots of people in the world. And why, why are they immigrants? Why are they, whether documented or undocumented, what are their reasons for moving to a different country, etc.? Always, you know, even if it's, even if it's fiction, reading about someone else's perspective, I think is always a good place to start and get an idea of different cultures, different personalities, why people do what they do, etc. So while it is a fun read, it is a it's a fast paced read, I think it's also um it can be an important read because it can open up new ways of looking at the world and maybe viewing a, a topic that is in the news a lot right now, especially with um an election year, etc. So I'm going to let Monica, or excuse me, Monica, let Cindy tell you about the book and the writing of the book. Again, it is called Multo, and the author is Cindy Fazzi. Hi, Cindy. Welcome to the podcast. Hi, Sarah. I'm so happy to be here. Thank you for having me. I am very happy to have you here as well. I'm excited to talk about your book, Multo. But before we do that, um, if you would just take a moment to share a little bit about yourself, yourself so my listeners can get to know you a bit. Yeah, my name is Cindy Fazzi. I'm the author of Multo, a contemporary thriller. I'm Filipino-American. I was born and raised in the Philippines, and I immigrated to this country to the United States, that is, in 1989. My background is in journalism. I am a former Associated Press reporter, and I've worked as a journalist in the Philippines, in Taiwan, and in the United States. Um, After I left the news business, I became a marketing writer, and even to this day, I'm still a marketing writer. That's my day job. All right. Thank you. And um, Muto is, it means ghost, uh, according to the beginning of yes. the book. Is that Tagalog? Yes, it and is. And did I say Muto that right? Means, yes, you did. I, I always have Excellent. to think about that word. <laughs> <laughs> um. So can you give um, an overview of the story? Yes, so Multo, like you said, means ghost. In Tagalog, the novel follows a Filipino-American bounty hunter named Domingo who is looking for the only query that has ever eluded him, 
an undocumented biracial Filipino woman named named Monica who can disappear like a ghost. Monica is overstaying in the United States because she's looking for her American father who doesn't know that she exists. The father happens to be an Air Force general who doesn't want a political scandal. And so he hires Domingo the Bounty Hunter to nab Monica and take her to the immigration authorities for deportation. The book essentially pits a dogged bounty hunter against a desperate woman in hiding. They are compatriots. They are both in the United States in pursuit of the American dream, but their dreams are on collision course. Yes. Okay, now that you have a bit more of an overview about the story itself and you've met Cindy, it's time to take our first break of this episode. When we come back, we'll be talking about the inspiration for this story and this series. So stay tuned. You're listening to the GSMC Book Review Podcast, and I'll be right back. Are you tired of the same old news? Are you sick of the seemingly endless political spin and negativity? The GSMC America Still Beautiful podcast is a weekly news podcast covering all the top positive and uplifting news stories. We cover stories that will inspire, uplift, and remind you of the good in the world. Tune into the Golden State Media Concepts America Still Beautiful podcast to get all the great and positive news stories of today. Download the GSMC America Still Beautiful podcast on iTunes. Stitcher, SoundCloud, Google Play, or anywhere you find podcasts. Just type GSMC in the search bar. Welcome back to the GSMC Book Review Podcast. I am speaking, as you know, today with author Cindy Fazzi about her thriller, Multo. Let's go ahead and return to that conversation. And what was your initial inspiration for the story, which is the first of a series, correct? Yes. Yes. So what was your jumping off point for the story? So the subject of immigration is very close to my heart because I'm an immigrant myself and I've always wanted to write a novel about immigration. Having said that, Multo is not a documentation of my own um, immigration journey, but rather it is an offshoot of my experience as an immigrant. The character of my protagonist, Domingo the Bounty Hunter, was actually inspired by a news article I read a long time ago in the New York Times about a real bounty hunter who only handled cases involving undocumented immigrants. So I thought that was really fascinating that the guy has a niche and that he specialized in one area. Yeah, and Domingo is interesting because he is a naturalized citizen, but he has some similar experiences to the people that he is then tracking down, uh, which gives him both a unique insight and also maybe maybe a bit of a conflict of interest sometimes, you know, just because he does Mm -hmm. understand them so well. You have um, you have Domingo writing his own kind of manual for being undocumented. Can you talk about adding that element? Right. So Domingo, the bounty hunter, he's 40 years old. He's kick-ass. He's a wise ass. He's a naturalized U.S. citizen. He's quite funny. He's politically incorrect whenever he's critiquing the immigration system. And he is writing an advice book for immigrants or for those who want to come to the United States. So like you said, uh, at first glance, it seems like it's a conflict of interest. Like, you know, he, he goes out chasing undocumented immigrants who are convicted criminals, but at the same time, he's writing this advice book on how to assimilate in U.S. society and, you know, how to be a good immigrant once you arrive in the United States. So I think that's what makes him very interesting. 
that there's always that tug, you know, of within him of being a really strict enforcer of justice. If you're illegal, then you don't belong here. If you are convicted of a crime, then you must, you know, pay for that crime. But at the same time, he himself is a recent immigrant and he understands what it means to be unwanted and unwelcome and what it means to be struggling in your in an adopted country because he himself feels that way yeah and i think we see that at one there's just one line when he's writing and he's he's writing all this advice and his suggestions for um assimilating and fitting in and and becoming a part of your your new country but he says unless you're a criminal and then this book is not for you so he does right. have that line <laughs> Um, but he's right. also, you're right. He is a smart ass, but he's got this, he's got a, he's got a sense of humor when he writes this. So it's, it's more, I think, approachable right. than it might be. Right. So, you know, before Monica, he had a really black and white concept of what it means to be an American. It's either you're legal or you're not. And so, because he's used to deporting criminals who's Crimes are a lot worse than just entering the country illegally. I mean, we're talking about convicted murderers and drug dealers. So Monica is not like that at all. Her only crime is that she has a father who doesn't want her. And so she, and that is why she's bound to change Domingo. Yeah. And this is, you know, one of those things we don't want to give too much away, but I will just yeah. say that her father, whew, not a good guy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, right. A little bit more about Domingo as the main character. Can you talk about what readers are going to relate to with him as the as the protagonist? Yeah, I think you know Domingo is like every recent immigrant I know. They come to the United States because they believe it is a better place to be in. And so when they come here, they mostly want to abide by the rules. They want to be a part of the society that they think is better than where they come from. They don't really come to the U.S. to say, hmm, how can I, you know, uh, rock the boat and, and do all sorts of things. So Domingo is like that. Like he's very loyal to his adopted country. He wants to do right by uh native born americans he he believes that he is serving his adopted country uh as a bounty hunter just the way that a soldier or even a priest serves their communities so he believes that his purpose in life is to make the word immigrant Honorable. And that is why he says outright, if you are undocumented and you are a criminal, you've done, you know, really serious crime, then, then Domingo is your worst nightmare. Yes, absolutely. And this is, this book is fiction. It's not written, um, as, a, you know, necessarily as a commentary on immigration, but that is, be, especially now that it's an election year, that's a topic that is talked about a lot. So what would you hope that a reader might take away from this story in terms of the larger immigration issue and conversation? Right. So um, first of all, I just want to introduce Filipino-American characters, Filipino culture to more readers, because there are very few Filipino-American characters in novels, especially in genre fiction um Domingo basically subverts the existing bounty hunter trope because in novels today even in movies bounty hunters are typically portrayed as white saviors a white man so Domingo is the first brown immigrant bounty hunter in a novel so, so that's one thing I wanted to introduce Filipino American characters, Filipino culture. I also wanted readers to just get a glimpse of the most common, um, 
struggles and aspirations of recent immigrants, which for brown or black immigrants, it usually boils down to that basic need for respect and acceptance because most of them uh, are told in so many ways, um, so many times that they don't belong in America. Yes, unfortunately, that is often the first the first reaction, regardless of how they entered the country. Um, that is, mm-hmm. yeah, there's a lot of stereotypes and a lot of misunderstandings, I think, when it comes to people who look different than what other people might expect. Which is actually why I, uh, another reason that I really like Domingo, because as you said, he's not he's not white. When you think of bounty hunters, they're often portrayed as this large white man, you know, very, very built, very, very sort of scary looking. Right. And Domingo right. is constantly talking about how he is short right? <laughs> and he does not fit that stereotype. So he he's really giving a different perspective and picture of something that we probably have a fixed image in our head as readers. Mm-hmm. It is now time for our second break of this episode. When we come back, we'll be talking about character development and how that works for Cindy as an author. Stay tuned. You're listening to the GSMC Book Review Podcast, and I'll be right back. Tired of searching the vast jungle of podcasts? Now listen close and hear this out. There's a podcast network that covers just about everything that you've been searching. The Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network is here. Nothing less than a podcast bliss with endless hours of podcast coverage. From news, sports, music, fashion, cooking, entertainment, fantasy, football, and so much more. So stop lurking around and go straight out to the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. Guaranteed to fill that podcast itch. Whatever it may be, visit us at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter and download us on iTunes, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Welcome back to the GSMC Book Review Podcast and my conversation with Cindy Fazzi. We are talking about her thriller, Muto. When it comes to your characters um, and you sit down to write, how much, of a, how much of a picture of that character do you have in your head before you start writing and how much of that character develops as you write? Yes, so I am a plotter. So I write an outline before I start a novel So in the same vein, I do brainstorm my, just my main character, at least. I write a bio of my character and try to flesh it out as much as I can before I start writing. But for all the other characters, secondary characters, even my villains, um, I just write them as I go along. But it's really the main character that I spend a lot of time with before I start writing that first page. Yeah, it makes sense. And then how about research? Did you do any particular types of research for the book or the series? Right. Um, for Multa, I used a nonfiction book called uh, Bail Enforcement, The Advanced Bounty Hunter by Bob Burton, who was a well-known bounty hunter. He was instrumental in elevating the professional st- uh, professional standards of bounty hunters in the United States. Uh, he died in 2016. So his book, I used it as really my Bible while I, while I was writing. It tells you how to look for fugitives, how to arrest them safely, how to deliver them to, lo- to local authorities properly. His book is so good that the Department of Justice uses it even today, as a training manual for federal agents. So I use that book for everything, the nuts and bolts of bounty hunting. The other aspect of my book about immigration, um, I really didn't 
need as much research because I went through the process of acquiring U.S. citizenship myself. So I just relied on my experience. Sure. Yeah, you would definitely have that in your in your back pocket. So you wouldn't have to <laughs> do as much there. Um, the book has elements of thriller, elements of crime fiction, elements of mystery. How 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 would you how do you um, classify what genre would you put it in for you as the author? Right, um, it's a thriller in the sense that the time is ticking. Like he's looking for Monica, so it's it's basically a thriller. Right, and what what draws you to writing within that genre? Yeah, as a reader, I've always loved thrillers. Patricia Highsmith is my favorite thriller writer of all time. As a writer, however, you could say that I accidentally wrote a thriller in this novel, Multo, because this is actually my first attempt to write fiction a long time ago, way back in 1995. And I originally wrote it as a literary novel from the point of view of the undocumented immigrant. At that time, the book was considered literary fiction. And it was universally rejected by all the literary agents who read the book. They all said the same thing. They said, this book is uncommercial. It's unsellable. And so I moved on. I wrote other novels. So two of my other novels were published before Multo. It took me many, many years before I completely rewrote it, this time from the point of view of Domingo the Bounty Hunter. So once I did that, it organically became a thriller because the bounty hunter is all about the hunt and the chase. And once it became a thriller, it became commercial and it got me a literary agent who sold the book in 2022. And then a year later, last year, last September, the book was published. I love that you stuck with it and that it, it evolved and, and became, you know, you say accidentally became a thriller, but yeah. <laughs> it seems like it became what it needed to, to, to get out into the world. Absolutely. Yeah. And do you have an arc for the series? How many books do you think there might be? Or are you just going to write as long as Domingo gives you stories? Um, so my agent sold the book uh, uh, in a two book deal. So there's definitely book. Two, which I have already written. Book two is called Mulat, which means to be aware in Tagalog, and it features uh, the same protagonist, Domingo the Bounty Hunter. Uh, it's supposed to be published later this year, but I don't have a publication date yet. Okay. And again, I don't want to give anything away from the ending of this book, but are we going to... It's a little bittersweet at the end of this book. I'll just say that. Are we are we going to get more of Domingo's personal life? In book two? Um, yes. Yes, you'll get a little bit more uh, of Domingo's personal life. It's uh, So in book two, he is investigating a new case. It involves another heiress, but this time a young white. American heiress who is romantically obsessed with a mysterious migrant who saved her life in the desert. And so, again, it involves undocumented, one undocumented immigrant who is mysterious. And what Domingo finds out about this stranger uh, could get him in the rich and his rich employer, they, it could get them both killed. Oh dear, yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, you've got to have you've got to have action, right? You have yeah. to have that 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 tension. What you said, book two has been written. What are you currently working on? Yeah, so I am um, writing another thriller. It's speculative thriller, which I've never done before. So it is exciting for me. It's probably premature to talk about it since it's not finished. So I will just leave it at that. <laughs> Absolutely. Sure. Um, and then you, you've written two other novels. Um, is there anything that you want to talk about with either of those mentioning anything? 
Yeah, um, believe it or not, my very first novel was a contemporary romance um, called In His Corner, published in 2015 by Lyrical Press. And then it was followed by his, a historical novel called My MacArthur, about Thomas MacArthur, the five-star general who liberated the Philippines. It was, uh, it's, it's historical fiction based on real people, based on real um, story, real experience of Douglas MacArthur. Uh, he had a relationship with a young Filipino actress in the 1930s. So that novel is a fictionalized account of that relationship. Um, that novel was published in 2018. And then Multo is contemporary thriller. So you could say that... I am a multi-genre author by accident. <laughs> or by design, we could go. We could uh, yeah, go not by design. design. It's it's very weird. It's a long story. Basically, when I write a book and I'm unable to publish it or to sell it, I move on. I write something else. And then I move on. It took me a very long time to get published, but I write in different genres because the alternative is to stop writing. And I don't want to stop writing. I absolutely love to write. And so I'm willing to adapt. Just like in Multo, I rewrote it completely. I'm willing to try other genres. So it took me a very long time to find my voice, but I think that I'm really happy with thrillers now. So wonderful. Well, that's good. It, you know, I think, I think sometimes finding an author, finding their voice is a work in progress, just depending on how things go, you know, I know. Tell me about it. <laughs> <laughs> it is time for our final break of this episode, but I, I cannot tell you about it because I am not an author nor have I, I mean, I was gonna say, nor have I found my voice. Hopefully I've found my voice in other areas of my life, but not being a, an author, at least not currently, maybe someday, but I have definitely not found my voice in that department yet. I'll think about that over the break. <laughs> I'm not going to find my voice over the break. That was a very random statement. Uh, when we come back, Cindy will be talking about the process of finding that voice and becoming a published author. Stay tuned. You're listening to the GSMC Book Review Podcast, and I will be right back. Pets bring such joy to our lives, and the GSMC Pets Podcast is here to share in that joy. We'll tell stories of pets finding their forever homes, acting in unexpected ways, being helpful, or just being silly. Whether you love dogs, cats, llamas, reptiles, fish, or you've never met an animal you didn't like, the GSMC Pets Podcast is for you. Welcome back to the GSMC Book Review Podcast and the conclusion of my interview with author Cindy Fazzi. You started writing Multo in the 90s, but it was writing something that you always thought you wanted to do, or how did you decide that you were going to sit down and, and try to write? Yes, yeah, so, um, as a novelist, I'm really a late bloomer. Um, so unlike other writers who write fiction at the age of five or whatever, I only seriously thought of writing fiction after I uh, arrived in the U.S. while I was in graduate school. I arrived in 1989, and the biggest best-selling book of that year was Joy Luck Club by Amy Tan, and I was so inspired by her. I loved that book. I really claimed her as my own, even though she's Chinese-American and I'm Filipino-American, but she's the closest to, you know, a role model I could get. And I must say that at that moment, I decided I'm going to try to write fiction. And then many years, well, a few years later, I I started writing Muto. 
No, I love that because you, you, you don't often see, I think, I think books are becoming more diverse, but it's nice to see different cultures represented. And so I, I only know a couple other authors who have uh, Filipino characters as the the main protagonists. So I love learning about other cultures, other food, Mm -hmm. uh, you know, just it's, it's Mm -hmm. an accessible way, I think, to learn about other places and other cultures. Um, from your own path to writing and your own experience, what advice would you give for an aspiring author? So writing fiction is a very long process, at least for me it was. Um, And getting published traditionally is really hard. I'm finding an agent alone takes a really long time. So my advice to aspiring writers is try to find out as early as you can why you want to do this. Why are you writing and what you hope to accomplish? I think knowing that, knowing your reason for writing is going to help you a lot in developing that resilience that you're going to need once the rejections arrive, because if you want to be traditionally published, they will arrive. There's going to be a lot of rejections. So the sooner you know why you're doing this, then the better off you are, because you'd be able to stick with the work. You get rejected, fine. It's either you rewrite and improve your current work in progress or you move on to the next book but you know why you're doing it and so you're going to continue yes thank you the book is in english is uh is it there a tagalog a, a tagalog translation or anything translation? like that no because in the philippines uh, people do read english and they understand it, so there was no need to translate it so it is in english okay makes sense you mentioned that you love to read thrillers um and one of your favorite authors uh other authors and and favorite genres when you're just reading for you um yeah i'm a big fan of walter mostly he is the best-selling author of devil in a blue dress um, he is an inspiration to me. I am a big fan of Lee Child, the Jack Reacher books. I really enjoy it. I enjoy them. Um, uh, but there's one book that's actually not a thriller, but it has a similar theme as my book. It's about immigration that I highly recommend um, to readers. Uh, it's called The Son of Good Fortune by fellow Filipino-American author Leslie Tenorio. I don't know him personally, but I love his book. It's a beautifully written um, coming-of-age novel about an undocumented Filipino teenager um, dealing with his uh, difficult mother who's also undocumented but it has a lot of a uh, sense of humor. So I think if you're looking to read about immigration, it's a great book to read. It's called The Son of Good Fortune by Leslie Tenorio. Good to know. Thank you so much. If people are interested in learning a little bit more about you and your books, um, can you share where they can find you on the internet? So website and any social media that you're active on. Yes. So my website is just cindyfazzy.com. And I'm on Instagram, on X, LinkedIn, Facebook. um, And it's just my handle is just at Cindy Fazzy. Easy enough. I love it. (laughs) Cindy, we've talked about a few things, but is there anything that we have not covered that you wanted to make sure you highlighted? Um. I am a really intentional writer. I write. Because I, again, my I'll quote my favorite author, Walter Mosley. He said that if you can't find your people in fiction, then they don't exist. Uh, I write fiction because I want to introduce readers to Filipino-American 
authors, I mean, Filipino American characters. And I would like to add to the existing Filipino American literature, which is quite meager at this point. And so for your listeners out there, I hope you'll give my novel Multo a chance. Give it a try. I hope you enjoy it. Thank you so much, Sarah. And thank you. I really appreciate you taking the time to talk about Muto and the series um, and writing in general. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you once again to Cindy for joining me for this conversation about Muto and about the series and writing in general. Uh, as I said before, I really appreciate it. I, I very much do. I as I was going back through this interview and listening to Cindy talk about writing and her life, I, you know, it's a book review podcast. And so I talk about, try to talk about mostly, mostly about the books and writing, et cetera. But sometimes I have so many follow-up questions about authors' lives. I don't want to get too personal. I don't want to sound like I'm prying, but um, just, I have so many questions <laughs> from so many of the authors that I speak to and Cindy's experience uh as an immigrant and coming to a different country than being coming a journalist and being a journalist in multiple different countries, as she said, uh, and then starting to write the, the novel, you know, back in the nineties. And then it's, uh, I could probably spend several hours talking to people and you would wonder why all of my podcasts were three to five hours. But, um, I don't know. People fascinate me and uh, hopefully they fascinate you as well. But hopefully since you are here and you are, uh, a reader or maybe an author, then you are checking out some new authors and some new books that you might not have heard of otherwise. So if you are a fan of thrillers, if you are interested in um, reading a Filipino American character in um, a, a kind of a different kind of role than maybe some books that you have read. I mean, we've got the the naturalized American citizen now hunting down illegal immigrants who have broken the law in some significant way. Um, and that is Domingo. And he's, he's got a kind of got a dry, sometimes dark sense of humor, but not like really dark, maybe a gray sense of humor. <laughs> but like I said, it's, it's, it's a fast read. It's, um, it's written with a, a lot of warmth. And I, so if this is something that you are interested in, or if you are looking for a, a gift for a bookish friend who is a fan of thrillers and might be interested in this, then definitely check out Multo and the sequel that when it comes out, and even some of Cindy's other writings as she continues writing. So thank you again to Cindy. Thank you, as always, to you, my listeners. If you have not done so already, please like, subscribe, follow, leave a review on whatever pl platform you are listening to this podcast on. That is so incredibly helpful in getting the podcast out to other listeners. Thank you in advance for um, doing that. If you've already done any of that, thank you, thank you, thank you. And then you can find the podcast on social media, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. And that actually reminds me, Cindy said she would be very happy to send a listener a copy of the book um, and the format of your choice. So whether that is an e-copy or a hard copy, I think maybe there's even an audiobook, but I would have to double check that. If you are interested in reading Multo and you would like to be in the consideration for that giveaway copy, you can find the podcast on Facebook, X, Instagram, TikTok. Leave a comment on the post where I um, talk about this episode, which I'll be posting in just the next hour or so. Go find that uh, within the next week. We'll give it till next Friday for people to comment on those social media posts. And then I will choose someone from the people who have commented. And then Cindy would be happy to send you a copy of Multo. So please do that. And that's a great way to interact um, with the social media as well. If you're not already following, follow. If you haven't ever left a comment, this would be the per perfect time to start. Thank you to Cindy for offering that giveaway copy. And thank you, of course, to you, my listeners. I hope that you will join me for the next episode when I will be speaking with author Yasmin Ango. Uh, it's another um, thriller, but crime fiction thriller, very strong female character, assassin female character. Uh, we will be talking about the third book in her trilogy um, featuring a main character called Nina Knight. This one is called It Ends With Night, so it's wrapping up Nina's trilogy. 
So please join me for that conversation with Yasmin and learn about May. Oh, the whole trilogy is complete. So if you're interested, you know, when you hear the interview, you will have all three books to read, which is one of my favorite things when I find a new series and I get to read them all at once. I hope you're having just a phenomenal week and I hope you have something wonderful planned for this weekend, whether that is going out and being social or staying in and not talking to a single soul. I hope you get whatever kind of weekend you're looking for. But, you know, from my perspective, I always, always hope that if you are a rabid reader, that you have plenty of time to get yourself lost in lots of good books over the weekend. Thank you so much. You've been listening to the Golden State Media Concepts Book Review Podcast. Part of the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. You can find this show and others like it at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Download our podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Just type in GSMC to find all the shows from the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. From movies to music, from sports to entertainment, and even weird news. You can also follow us on Twitter and on Facebook. Thank you, and we hope you have enjoyed today's program.